Look around. What connects us? For me, it's the ocean, the fish, the beautiful places, and the anticipation of discovery. The exotic places we imagine, that we seek out, and the journey to find them is really a process of connecting with a different culture, with other people, and gaining respect. We have a responsibility to cultivate these connections and to treat them as an opportunity to learn, to observe, to think differently, to challenge our own perspective. We are using the tools of science to unlock the mysteries of these valuable, amazing places. It's a life connected to the culture of the water. But how can we ensure that our sport and the fishery thrive in the years to come? That our connections and the relationships persist? What can the ocean teach us about ourselves? We are separated by 90 miles, but we are forever bound by our shared cultures, music, religion, passions for sport. My culture is the water, and Cuba has its own culture of the water, its fisheries, and the sportsmen who love it. We are connected by 90 miles. Today, the United States of America is changing its relationship with the people of Cuba. In the most significant changes in our policy in more than 50 years, we will end an outdated approach that for decades has failed to advance our interests, and instead, we will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. Cuba is a mystery to most of us. We think of the old cars, the majestic buildings showing honest years, simple lives and simple times. But it's so much more than that. The people are complex, resourceful, loving and warm. Cuba is beginning to open up. There is a readiness for change. There is optimism, there is hope, but there is also concern. More than anything, Cuba wants respect. They want to maintain their culture and dignity. They know who they are. The Cuban charisma is there, full of passion and ready to take on a new day. The Florida Keys Flats fishery has an annual economic impact of more than $465 million. The Everglades, $1 billion. Together with the Bonefish Tarpon Trust, we traveled to Cuba to meet the guides and scientists and consider how we can collaborate in research and ideas to ensure these fisheries, these valuable economic engines, remain intact. Cuba is a world leader in managing fishing sustainability. They recognize the potential of their own fisheries 
and are working to foster sports fishing tourism. They themselves, at the park level, educate and train uh, their guides so that uh, when they take uh, the tourists to uh, the ecologically affected areas, uh, the, the guides know what they're talking about and they are able to explain the intricacies involved in, in these uh, ecosystems. They've taken the program very seriously. As Cuba emerges and the economics open up, tourism, and specifically sports fishing tourism, will play an important role in the management of their natural resources. The idea of a high yield, low impact industry like fly fishing isn't lost on the Cuban people. A similar approach has been taken in the Bahamas, where bone fishing is a $140 million a year industry. The efforts BTT has made have helped the government there to create national parks to protect critical spawning events. With the recent changes in diplomatic relations and the beginning of a partnership with Cuba, we hope to establish a similar model of cooperation. In Cuba, we attended a symposium with our scientific colleagues to address the concerns about the future of our fisheries. The flow of knowledge must go in both directions. And Cuba has an insight from the mistakes that we've made here in South Florida. This is one of the most exciting results of the newly opened relationship between the United States and Cuba. It affords us an unprecedented opportunity for the scientists and managers in our protected areas to collaborate. Working together and learning together, we can develop the best ways to protect some of the world's most outstanding marine environments for generations to come. que este documento marque el inicio de un proceso sostenido de intercambio que nos permita desarrollar investigaciones científicas y compartir las buenas prácticas de manejo y conservación en las áreas identificadas de interés común para una cooperación beneficiosa entre nuestras naciones, la región y para el mundo. A newly signed Memorandum of Understanding between the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the National Park Service, and Cuba's National Center for Protected Areas establishes a sister sanctuary program with the goal of cooperation in research, sharing of information, and management of our inextricably linked ecosystems. This new partnership between the United States and Cuba encompasses the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, the Dry Tortugas National Park, Biscayne National Park, and the Guanacabibes National Park in Cuba. Also included are two unique reef banks, the Flower Garden Banks located 100 miles off the coast of Texas, and the Banco San Antonio off the western peninsula of Cuba. These sister sanctuaries are uniquely located and linked by natural forces. The Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary is home to the third largest barrier reef in the world and intersects the Gulf of Mexico in the Atlantic Ocean. 250 miles to the south, on the western tip of Cuba, is the Guanacabibes Park and the amazingly rich coral reef of the Banco San Antonio. Ocean currents flow up from the Caribbean basin, form the Gulf Loop Current and western eddies, and connect all of the sanctuaries by an ocean current conveyor belt that plays a vital role in the distribution of larvae, food, and migratory fish. Formally recognizing the value of intact healthy ecosystems to both nations is a major step forward in the protection of our shared marine environment. For tourism industries such as fly fishing, protection is critical, and partnership with Cuba will ultimately lead to a better understanding of these amazing places and strengthen our shared interest. It's possible that we are feeling our connections with Cuba on the bonefish flats of the Keys. 
As Cuba faced economic challenges 15 years ago, commercial overfishing of bonefish heavily reduced their breeding stock. The Florida Keys bonefish population began to decline at the same time. As Cuba recovers, it is incorporating hard-learned lessons in conservation. There has been a shift in the priorities. An ethos of sustainability has emerged. Today, because of progressive measures Cuba is taking, we are beginning to see our bone fishing rebound in the Florida Keys. It might be that the Florida Keys bonefish population depends, in part, on the spawning of bonefish in Cuba. If we can unlock some of the mysteries of how and where the bonefish spawn throughout the Caribbean and the work to protect these incredible events, we can hopefully bridge the gap between cultures and see the numbers of bonefish return to historical levels. The real goal is to know how the pieces of a complex puzzle all fit together. We can't do this alone. Finding a common thread in fly fishing and reaching out to others who share our passion, who have a different perspective and drawing on their experiences, reveals who we are and the subtle currents and rhythms that connect us. Some things are true everywhere. For fishermen, at the end of the day, it really boils down to the story we live. Rum, cigars, and bullshit. Although we may have different perspectives and interpretations, our story is the same. We want more. It's tangible perfection that we can let go of. The anticipation of a new adventure floods our mind. It grabs us, compels us, and leads us off the beaten path. Our ideas are shaped by experiences that change our perspective. A guide's job isn't to make fishing easy. It's to reveal the intricacies of a fluid puzzle. To evoke an appreciation for the relationship we share with our natural world to lead the way. What's out there? We take ourselves out of everyday life for a reason. Go. It's not for everyone. But some seek it out. Some thrive. Vene, vene, vene. So clear you can see right through Limitless offense on the horizon 90 miles, a million ways We go to find it without knowing what it is. And when the unanticipated strikes, our perspective changes. We see the world differently. Wow. We learn from the unexpected and find freedom in the simplicity of a moment. <laughs> the story is a personal one. It matters to everyone. How do we use science and the understanding that we are connected to make a difference? We have to lead the way. Our sport is a multi-billion dollar industry, and when managed correctly, is sustainable. We know this. Cuba learned from economic hardship that the model of sustainability ensures livelihoods. We put in too much effort to sit back and hope for the best. It's up to us to make it happen. We have to show how the next generation's journey into wilderness, or fish of a lifetime, depends on what we are learning and doing now. The future of our sport and the people entrenched in it depend on what we do today. We are partners on this journey. It's time to move forward, to take risks, to embrace the unexpected.
so clear that you can see right through Like glass, purple and blues Huff and a Cuba, baby, on my way Ninety miles, but a million ways Today and night, be that day